What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. Recently we've been taking a look and just kind of like breaking down a lot of the mechanics or features of League of Legends in general that a lot of players potentially maybe take for granted since you know they are kind of mechanics that are super familiar to everybody really. And today we wanted to take a look at something that could potentially be a little bit more useful hopefully and we're looking at Flash. You know Flash is something that almost everyone uses in pretty much every single game so although you might have a good understanding about when to use it. You could also be missing a lot of the more interesting tricks and mechanics you can do when you combine Flash with some other game mechanics in general. And so today we're attempting to explore some of those tricks so that you guys have even more ways to use the Flash Summoner spell in your games in the future. And just before we start, I wanna give a huge shout out to ProGuides.com for helping me out with the editing on this video. They're actually releasing a new app that's gonna be free to use and it's gonna be very helpful. So definitely check out their new app as well as you can check out their site with a free trial with the link in the description. And if you guys enjoyed the video, definitely hit that like button and let's begin. So our first trick today, well, to be honest, okay, it's not really a trick, but it is a piece of information that you really need to understand if you're gonna use the other tricks in this video. Essentially it's about the way that flash works from a mechanical perspective. So the thing to understand is that flash does not interrupt, cancel, or delay animations in any way whatsoever. Now that might sound pretty obvious, but it actually has a lot more complex implications that as a result allow all of the other tricks in the rest of the video to actually work effectively. The only thing that flash does is just straight up move your champion. So if you're using it in combination with abilities, flash will just move your champion while the animation for that ability is playing out. And so, okay, now we can get into the actual tricks that will hopefully be useful. So the first one is an animation cancel that allows you to cast your abilities approximately like 30% faster, I wanna say. And it's something that actually works on a ton of different abilities. All it takes is to use the ability and then flash immediately afterwards. And there's actually too many abilities to list all of the ones that work this way, but the thing is is that there's actually a really simple trick that you can use to figure out if this sort of animation cancel will work with the respective ability. So the way it works is that if you cast a skill shot ability when you have your cursor outside of the max range of the ability, there's two scenarios that can happen. In the first scenario, your champion will cast the skill shot regardless towards the direction that your cursor is pointing, despite the fact that your cursor is outside of the max range of the ability. And in the second scenario, your champion will instead move forward until the max range of the ability is within the range of your cursor. And then once after walking into that distance, they will cast the ability automatically. Now using flash to animation cancel will work as long as the skill shot or whatever respective ability you're using is of the first mechanic, of the first scenario, where they can cast regardless of whether or not your cursor is in actual range of the ability's radius. And this animation cancel technique is something that really lets you surprise people and jump on them with like a really quick and sneaky play. Since the thing is, is that this trick doesn't only cast the ability really quickly, it also shortens the animation, which is because usually the animation starts and ends before you actually flash. But with this trick, the animation starts before the flash. And so during the cast animation, part of that is taken up by the animation of you flashing, which as a result makes it a lot Lot harder to dodge the ability since you're essentially both hiding the start of the animation and casting the ability a little bit quicker than usual leaving the enemy player way less time to react and potentially putting you in a better position to follow up on the damage the next trick is pretty similar to the previous one but instead of working with certain skill shots it actually only works with targeted abilities instead so similar to the last trick it does let you cast abilities quite a bit faster and it also adds in a little bit of an element of surprise that people might not be expecting. So the way it works is that you can first target an enemy who is outside of your range with a targeted ability, which will then as a result cause your champion to move towards them until you're actually in range to cast it. But instead of taking the time to walk into range though, you can actually just flash into range instead and the input will remain queued and instantly activate once you flash into range. For example, say you want to rune prison an enemy champion really quickly, but you're outside of the range. You know, usually you would flash into range and then activate your rune prison, but that's actually pretty slow to do because you have to time it yourself or you have to like button mash. And as a result, there's gonna be some sort of delay based on your own reaction time. Whereas using this trick, you can target an enemy with a rune prison ability, activate that, and then flash into range, 
and then the rune prison cast is still going to be queued or input buffered is the technical term for it. So once you flash into range, it will automatically cast the rune prison ability. And the trick works because of the thing that we mentioned at the start of the video. Flash does not interrupt abilities. If you had targeted someone with rune prison and then issued a movement command, you would cancel the ability because of the movement command. Flash doesn't have this problem though, so you can queue a targeted ability and flash into range to quickly execute the ability and catch people off guard. And just remember this trick in particular is for targeted ability specifically, so really just anything that is point and click on a single target, it should be able to work with. So our next trick builds on the previous ones a little bit, and it's about changing the direction of an ability. And this trick applies to both skill shots that have a direction-based target and targeted abilities that have some kind of like knockback effect on the enemy champion that gets hit by the ability, something like Veins Condemn. So first up, we're taking a look at the skill shot version of it. So you essentially just have to animation cancel like we mentioned in the first tip, and the ability will cast from the direction that you're facing after the flash. So this applies to area of effect or cone abilities such as Cassio's ultimate or Lux's ultimate, Annie's W, stuff like that where you can change the direction where the ability is cast from by flashing in a way that changes a certain direction. Unfortunately, it does not work for single target stuff like Ari's Charm or Amumu's Q. The technique will still cause you to cast the ability from where you flash to, but it won't change the direction of the skill shot in that certain scenario. It's another technique that you can use to really catch people off guard, since they might have expected you to maybe miss a Lux ultimate or think that you were maybe targeting someone else, only for you to actually change the direction and just hit them directly. So the second version of this trick applies to targeted abilities with knockbacks, you know, such as Bane's Condemn or Lee Sin's Ultimate. Essentially, you have to input buffer kind of like we mentioned before, where you queue your ability cast on the target, and then you flash to the opposite of the direction or to the different direction that you want the enemy champion to be knocked in. The reason it works is because the knockback effect doesn't actually trigger until after the cast animation and the ability fully lands, and it checks where you are positioned from before deciding which way to knock the respective enemy, which means that you can cast the ability and then flash to another location in order to change the angle at which they will be thrown. Now that version of the trick is pretty famous, you know, it's definitely been used a lot for some really cool out plays with champions like Lee Sin or Vayne, since at first it looks like the ability is going to push an enemy further away, but then like a quick flash causes them to be fired into a wall or towards the friendly team for an easy kill. Now for certain abilities, you can also flash during the animation to extend the range of the respective ability and still land that particular ability at the end of the flash. Now this trick is another one that's a little bit famous, you know, it's often used with stuff like Gragas's Body Slam, Vi's Vault Breaker, or perhaps Shen's Taunt. However, the main thing I want to focus on here is that it's actually usable with a lot more abilities than just the really well-known ones though, you know. The thing is is that you can use this trick with any ability in the entire game that functions as a dash. So you can't use it with stuff that functions as a blink, but anything that's a dash can be used with the range extension flash trick, as long as that particular ability doesn't lock you onto a single target, something like a Mumu's Q would. Another good example would be something like Jarvan's EQ combo. You can flash to extend the range of the knockup and catch someone off guard who maybe thought they were a little bit safe. And it's done, of course, by using your flash partway through the dash. Remember, as we mentioned at the start of the video, flash does not interrupt abilities. So you can simply do half the dash in one location and then finish the dash from the new location after the flash, giving you an extra range on it. Now the thing is that is really cool about this trick is that this can also be used to hit targets that you would have originally missed with your dash though, such as maybe two opponents that are next to each other that aren't actually lined up with your dash because you can use it to change the direction of your dash. Take Shen's taunt for example and say you're against you know two opposing champions that aren't actually in line with you. You can dash towards one and the second you hit the first champion you can flash to the side towards the second enemy and the dash will continue from your new position letting you taunt both enemies which otherwise in a regular situation would be impossible to land on both targets. And this is a technique that is very often used by pros when predicting enemy flashes. For example, a Gragas that is ganking a top laner, maybe he expects them to flash, so he flashes themselves to catch them, even though they would have originally flashed outside of his dash range. 
Now this is a trick that takes a little bit of getting used to, but really the trick is to just practice because you do have to really get used to the actual range of flash, which is 425 units, which is like potentially a little bit smaller than you might expect. Now our last trick is about flashing over larger walls, which is definitely something that most people probably know how to do, but I did want to cover and really just kind of explain how it actually works mechanically. So once you know the exact reason why you can flash over walls that are larger than Flash's range of 425 units, you're gonna fail those pesky wall flashes like the banana bush walls in your mid lane or the big wall in your top lane a lot less. So essentially the way that it works mechanically is that if you do something that would hypothetically put you inside of a wall, the game calculates and then forces you out of the wall on one side or the other based on whichever side that you are closest to. So the best way to do it is to get as close to the wall as possible and then make sure you flash in a location or at a spot where the range of flash will cover at least half of the length of the wall. And using this technique, you can flash over walls that cover almost, if not just about twice the range of flash overall. You've just gotta make sure that your flash will put you on the side of the terrain nearest to where you wanna end up. Otherwise the flash will fail and the terrain will put you on the wrong side. So you're pretty much just flash in place. Either way though, that's just about gonna wrap up today's video on some tips and tricks that I had with Flash. I wanna take some more like really in-depth mechanical looks into things in League of Legends. And I know some of the tricks in this video are probably things that you knew before, but I really feel like getting a very in-depth breakdown of how the mechanics themselves actually work really give you like a better understanding to potentially be able to do them more consistently or better than you otherwise would be able to. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully this was potentially useful to some of you. And if you guys wanna see more videos like this, maybe comment which mechanic I should take a look at next or just, you know, say if you thought this kind of thing was interesting. Either way though, looks like that's gonna be it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.